Okay, I'm going to start out with the LRAS-SARASAD. This is at equilibrium. Remember, the LRAS is full employment. natural rate of employment. So full employment, natural rate of unemployment, look the same, we have frictional and structural unemployment, okay? And potential out, that's the LRAS line. AD, shifters are consumption, investment, government spending, and net export. Now, interest rates, which come up a lot in monetary policy, lower interest rates, increase consumption and investment, AD right. Higher interest rates um, decrease consumption and investment because people do not want to borrow, AD left. The SRAS pretty much comes in with wages. If you have, like say, becomes an inflationary gap over here at B, where you're making more out, you need more workers, the demand for workers increases, SRAS to the left, all right? Now, I think it's also important to remember real GDP, employment, the income, all move in the same direction. Well, there we see maybe like one question on class test, there seems to be typically more questions where like government spends and the answer is increase in income or lower unemployment. The last thing on this graph to try to keep in mind, anything to the left the LRAS, cyclical unemployment. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do maybe for the rest, is just pretend how to fix cyclical unemployment or to fix recessionary gap. Now, obviously, you would fix expansionary gap the opposite. So a recessionary gap like this, you're going to fix with expansionary monetary policy. So let's look at the alternatives there. Okay. Now, I think this is one of the best. Do you have to um, graph this ever? No. But I really do think um, this helps. Now, I don't remember which way this is going to go at first. Yeah. But here is your expansionary monetary policy. Now, what could shift money supply? Let's first say the money supply graph comes in play when there is limited reserves, limited reserves. The shifter is reserve requirement, open market operations, and discount rate. If we're looking for expansionary monetary policy, to fix a recessionary gap. What we're going to do is lower the reserve requirement. You want to lower reserve requirement. And that allows banks to lend out more money, lower the discount rate, That's lower interest, which allows the discount rate is the rate that banks, that the Fed lends banks. So lower interest, um, the banks are going to borrow more money, money supply will increase, or buy, buy boom. And we know if you buy bonds, okay, the economy booms. Now, all three of these are going to do this. We're going to shift money supply to the right, interest rates down. Now, I'm going to stop here because there were a lot of these questions. Interest rates down, bond existing bond prices up. 
All right, there's that inverse relationship. Here's why I like this graph. You don't have to think about what's going to happen to investment. You just slide it across and you look. Investment increases. Okay, if investment increases, I know I'm going to shift aggregate demand to the right. Now, consumption also is going to increase, but investment is there and aggregate demand goes to the right. Now, I notice when aggregate demand goes to the right, price levels go up. If price levels go up, I need more money in my pocket. The demand for money would increase. You're not going to see all that in one problem. I'm just trying to review different <laughs> things that I thought hurt people. Okay? So again, a quick review. If you want to shift AD to the right and a limited reserve, reserve requirement down, discount rate down, buy bonds. That would shift the money supply to the right, lowering interest rates, investment increases, AD right. Anytime you lower any of the interest rates, what we just did is going to happen. So administrative rate, interest on reserves, policy rate, investment increases, AD right. All right, let me just try to get out the eraser. Erase this. Now, the one, the one graph um, I'm not showing is the Phillips curve, because I don't think that is in the multiple choice, okay? Yeah. Now, this is, you're not going to have to draw the ample reserve, but this is the ample reserve, okay? Now, discount rate which is up here. Again, is the interest rate the Fed lends banks? This is not as important in an ample reserve because the banks on a whole have lots of reserves. This line is the interest on reserves. Stays a bigger thing, price. Because if you lower this, banks are making less money on their reserves, you might take that out of the Fed and lend it out, all right? It's interest on reserves. Now, if you want to move both of them, the way we talk about it is the administered, the administered interest rates, okay? Now, any of these, if used, are going to do what we just did. If you lower it there, business and consumers are going to borrow, investment and consumption is going to go up, and AD is going to go to the right. Okay? If you increase interest rates, business and consumers are not going to want to borrow, investment's going to go down, AD left. Right? So if you want to contract the economy, you want AD to go to the left, interest rates up. All right? So I think we had a couple of us had a lot of problems on this. I'm hoping we could um, knock a couple of these out and, and get them right um, in the region. Now, the last thing, if, if the Fed buys bonds, it's going to shift money supply to the right, but nothing's going to happen because the interest rates are going to stay the same. The similarly, if the Fed sells bonds here, nothing's going to happen because interest rates are going to stay the same. All right, where did the loanable funds graph? Did the loanable funds graph appear? I thought I had a loanable funds graph. I know I did. Okay. We'll just draw a loanable funds graph. Right? 
All right, now, one of the keys, vulnerable fund, is real interest. So if you see real interest, me, it's two things. It could be the nominal equals real participation, or it could be something on the loanable fund. All right? Second is, from in, especially deficit spending, government borrowing, government running a deficit or a surplus, that's going to be in the loanable funds. Now, the key here is savings. Supply is saving. So both savings for the government, and savings for people. All right? Any type of increased savings is going to shift supply. Now, we saw um, in the last class that retired people were going to increase their savings, so supply to the right. Now, a couple of times, I think there was like government deficit spending. All right. So government spending would be here. It's going to shift demand right, increasing real interest rates. Business investment, optimism, going to shift demand to the right. Pessimism, going to shift demand to the left. <laughs> Business investment. And then um, any type of borrowing. So those are the three. Now, remember when government deficit spend, man to the right. Right? Now, what happens? Interest rates go up. If interest rates go up, business investment goes down, and that's crowding out. All right, so the last thing, I, again, I want to do is kind of go over. Uh, so the shifters here are anything to do with savings or supply, government spending, business investment, and borrowing is demand. The key is, if you see government spending, um, real interest rates, budget deficit, budget surplus, you can be thinking that it's time to come to loanable funds. All right, again, the LRAS, SRAS, AD. I just want anything to the left is a recessionary gap below, you know, full employment. Anything to the right is above full employment, and that's an inflationary gap. All right. Um, remember, real GDP, income, and employment all go in the same direction. Money supply here. I just want to remember, limited reserve is the key that you might be. Nominal interest. Now, this is real interest. This is wrong. Nominal interest, ma nom, is another key. Now, the, the shifters of supply are rod, reserve requirement, open market operation, discount rate. If I want an inflationary thing, I'm going to lower the reserve requirement, lower the discount rate by bonds. If price levels go up, the demand for money will increase. Okay. And if I increase the demand of money, nominal interest rates increase. Now, remember, you're probably not going to just say price levels, they're probably going to have government spending increases, <laughs> which is AD to the right which increases price levels, and then they'll ask you what happens to nominal interest, all right? When nominal interest is thought about, again, not the nominal equals real plus inflation equation, this is the graph. Limited reserves, this 
USD money supply is the graph. That's how you know to use the graph. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. And then again, I think this is good. Money supply increases due to lower reserve requirements, lower discount rate, or buying bonds. Investment, lower interest rate. Businesses want to borrow investment. AD to the right. Now, if AD goes right, that's price levels up, output up, employment up, income up. Now, I want to contract the economy. I'm going to just go the opposite way, right? If I want to contract the economy, I want to increase discount rate, increase the reserve requirements, sell suck. And that would shift money supply to the left. My interest rates would be higher and AD to the left. A lot of times when it says like contractionary or expansionary, think like, what does that want AD to do? Tractionary, I want AD to go left. Expansionary, I want AD to go right. Here, again, this is interest rates. It goes almost back to here, right? Lower interest rates, investment up, AD right. If you started like at, at like, nine and moved up to 10. So if you raise interest rates, investment down, AD left. If AD goes left, output down, price level down, income down, employment down. So that's interest on reserves and administrative rate are the two things that will come out of here. Any of the interest rates you see they all move in the same direction. They're going to all have the same impact. Okay, that's about it. I hope that helped.